is this more serialized show or is this a more episodic show? Is there an arc for the whole season? Yes, and and uh, it's. Uh, uh, it is more serialized. It's driven, uh, you know, as, as, as we discussed at the beginning, this is a show that was driven by character, not case. Uh, obviously, he works cases, and and uh, but there is a, a season-long arc that uh, is is really uh, dealing with this question of um, who am I, uh, Martin? Yeah, and it's really it was a challenging premise that I think David really really uh, uh, handled well. I mean, the, the pilot brings up questions that sometimes are inevitably more interesting than the answers. And so the prosecution of it and how to, how to take this wonderful engine of a deep cover operative and, and, and mix it with a, uh, uh, the existential dilemma that he's facing is a really, uh, I think, a challenging recipe that I think uh, David did a great job of serving up. You know? <laughs> but it is serialized and it's immersive. Yeah, there's a there's a, I think a, a, a rich mythology and and uh, to the show that will continue to evolve and um, and as well you know what's driving it at the heart is there is a conspiracy related to uh, this question of, of um, who is Martin Odom and uh, you know the show is about a guy who steps into these these legends these fabricated identities that he's using um, uh, to infiltrate to, to, to go undercover but it, it kind of circles back around on him when he you know when he wonders is is Martin Odom am I actually a legend as well and and that theme of identity is really kind of uh, runs very deeply through throughout uh, every episode of this uh, this the show. Was this uh, serialization part of the reshuffling of the show? Ali was telling about us uh, yes. how it changed a little bit after the pilot. Yes. Well, David uh, came in uh, uh, later in the game after we had. I think taken a wrong creative step and and made it a much a more more character based show, much more serialized because it's a challenge. Undercover, the hazard of undercover is a guy is you know he put, puts on a stetson and and a st and his stack of chips and shows up or his uh, his mustache, or his mustache or his, and his fake teeth and it really comes from a much more internal place and and, and a more psychological and emotional place. Which is, you know, um, if I'm not who I am, am I defined by my biography, by my CV, by my biology, or am I defined by my relationships, or by my work? And those are the questions that are swirling around Martin. So it comes with this, uh, it hits a, a guy in midlife at a big question, at, at a big time, which is sort of answering the question, who am I? Which I think is a question all of us relate to. And uh, it's an interesting dilemma. Um, and as well, this is a guy who undercover has to do some some questionable things, and so who he is is there's a moral aspect to it as well. Is 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 he a good man? Is he a bad man? Is he is he responsible for what he does undercover, or or does he get a pass because technically he's he's supposed to be a bad guy? In a way, it's like a sex worker or something you know, who says, you know, it's like that's the job, yeah. uh, and am I uh, uh, and. He, and in a way, he has to erect that wall to to, to be Martin Odom, and and uh, he you said know. erect and sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out. And just for the record, just for the record, Martin Odom does not go undercover as a sex worker at all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in season two. Maybe in season two. Yeah. I think it was interesting for Sean too because that undercover, what you do undercover, when you, um, you're an actor. You were creating this deep, rich mythology, and you're living it. And it be, and, and and really, actors like Daniel Day Lewis is a deep cover operative when he when he does, you know when he plays Abraham Lincoln for three months, and uh, he is Abraham Lincoln, and that's got to have collateral damage to the people around him who are uh, support him, but at the same time, and if you're saving the world, Daniel's not saving the world necessarily, but Martin is, you know. Can, can you talk about the choice of Sean Bean and how many times have you been asked if he's gonna die? <laughs> yes. How many times this hour? <laughs> Good. Right. See this? Don't kill Sean Bean. <laughs> We're doing our best. Keep alive. What happens in a single episode? 
Well, the, 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 you know, what we uh, really tried to do was kind of slow down the, 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 the story of being undercover so that, that as, as, as you said, you, we really need a lot of running room to kind of get somebody into what is essentially a, you know, a closed criminal network. You just don't like knock on the door and say, you know, I'm, I'm the guy. So um, we wanted to explore that. We wanted to kind of dig deep into, into what does it take to have, uh, you know, an undercover operative uh, credibly get in in a way that um, uh, feels authentic and, and um, you know, would not take us out of the, um, uh, you know, not take us out of the story. And so, so we we tried to serialize the stories a little bit more. That they there there are these uh, smaller arcs of legend, if you will, where you know he'll be Dante Auerbach for three episodes. But he, but he lives. But as, as David said, like he, each character has an apartment or a house in a place. He is sustaining these identities. Um, Simultaneously, and people in the world, he's you know, he'd be, so these these characters live, and it's not an infinite number of characters, so they're all living. It's almost like he has multiple personality disorder as a, uh, a will. That's his gift. That's what he does. He doesn't. No, he, he, he you know, he doesn't. He doesn't say, you know, oh, there's, uh, you know, I have to, it's a motorcycle gang of, of bad guys, I have to become a gang, a motorcycle gang member, so he puts on his leathers or anything like that. He has these identities that, these legends that pre-exist, and he says, you know what, I can use this identity to infiltrate that world. Like, that that has credibility, you know. Len Barlow is a legend that he has who is a, a, a sort of, um, you know, a Texas uh, uh, roughneck who, um, you know, he can walk into any bar uh, fight anybody in there and walk out with the girl, and you know he's going to be able to kind of get the ball rolling in terms of his uh, his investigation. And it's fun. I mean, I think I think we talk about the idea that when when Martin Odom's life or what Martin Odom believes is his life echoes with another part, a character he's created. It's fun. You're learning about Martin Odom in a really interesting way, in a certain prism of these other characters he's playing. So his marital strife in the pilot and in the first three episodes is sort of brought into relief. How he messed up his marriage. Uh, Dante Auerbach shares a similar tragedy in his life. So we're learning about Martin in a kind of interesting way.